Hello, my Soccer Universe. The Copa America 2024 group stage is in the books. We can look at the knockout round and it's also time to not only look back at the games, which we'll do as usual with a quick collage of the short videos, but also look at the group stage in general, look at winners and losers. And then at the end, we'll project forward of where things may go in this tournament. A tournament that is a quite interesting slash open one. Yes, we have our top four favorites, but that we had some outsiders making it into the knockout phase makes it really, really exciting. However, let's start with the losers. I mean, the losers have to be the two CONCACAF giants. In the last video, I already said, those two on the brink of elimination, and of course, they didn't turn it around. Mexico's was a little bit dramatic. They needed to get the win against Ecuador. Ecuador held out, and yes, there were some penalty calls, blah, 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 in there. But overall, it was a deserved exit. And one could see that coming, that even in this relatively easy group, Everyone knew they will be struggling. At least they finish ahead of Jamaica, another CONCACAF rival. The United States though, boy, this is a major disappointment. And it's so damning because it comes down to one moment of folly by Tim Weah that sets them on a losing run against Panama. And then you were not going to do anything against Uruguay. That was pretty clear from the onset. Panama even kept their bargain up, got the win against Bolivia and so yeah. The United States are out. A huge inquest will follow on that one. Is it time to sack the coach? Did it just reappoint it? It's maybe not the right time. Really, really trying times for the United States of America, the hosts of the next World Cup. Same as Mexico, same as Canada. Canada on the other side is one of the positives. And actually, I have to say, despite the two CONCACAF giants going out, I think CONCACAF doesn't have such a bad tournament overall. I mean, you have Canada going through in a group where you really didn't expect them. Yes, two more losers, Chile and Peru, they are aging sides, but you would have expected them to finish ahead of Canada. So that's a good one. And that Panama, I mean, that's a huge success story. It just came on the back of the United States, which is maybe something that CONCACAF didn't necessarily want to have. And I would even say Costa Rica taking a point of Brazil and having an outside shot of qualifying from a really tough group with Colombia and Brazil. It's also not so bad of a showing. On the other side, Comebol. I think the only real disappointment of the Comebol are Chile and Peru. Everything else is more or less as expected. Maybe Paraguay you can add in there as well. The title will go to a Comebol team. That to me is out of the question. I don't see Canada or Panama delivering multiple options to take home the trophy. That just is not in the cards. The big question mark of the favorites is of course Brazil. They have all the talent. They are the biggest star team at this World Cup. Yes, Argentina are the world champions. I get in a messy and this takes everything to another level. However, historically it's Brazil and Brazil don't look good. They finish on a the second group. They face now Uruguay side that really looks strong. And the question, of course, is Uruguay the real deal? And then, of course, there's also a Colombia side that they have to run through again. A Colombia side that played them quite evenly yesterday. To me, the most exciting teams are definitely Uruguay and Colombia. Argentina were relatively cruising through the group stage, I have to say. Almost in second gear, not conceding a goal, scoring when they need Lautaro Martinez actually, actually stepping up. But the most exciting side definitely has to be Uruguay. Now I question a little bit how difficult was that group. But the Marcelo Bielsa team is always something to behold. Add to it the talent of Uruguay, and I think Uruguay are true contenders. I can very well see Uruguay ousting Brazil. Once that happens, I think they will also go on against Colombia, and then we will have the classic Argentina-Uruguay final, most likely. However, I do not want to count Venezuela, who are, in Comable, the biggest winners, I would say. So, after this quick summary of what I think are the winners and losers at the Copa America. Let's quickly run through the collage of the short videos going through what happened in the games and we'll see each other on the other side. In yesterday's deciding game between Canada and Chile, Canada should have been down by a man after roughly five minutes after a Canadian elbow to a Chilean face that neither the referee nor VAR saw it was quite embarrassing. Chile themselves then go down a man roughly after 20 minutes after a second yellow card because of a tactical foul. Not sure if this was what we call in German fingerspitzengefühl, so fingertip feeling. In any case, 
Chilean desperation, they needed to win to advance, open the spaces up for Canada, who launched quite a few counter attacks and probably could have, if not should have, won it. They thought they won it late. However, there was an offside in the build up, and in the end, Chile just couldn't get the ball into the net. So Canada in a good position, but the draw would have left the door open for Peru. However, uh, Peru was completely outplayed by a messy less and overall changed Argentina's side. In the second half, the goals then came after Gallese saved a few good shots by Argentina. Lautaro Martinez scoring both goals. The first one, a really nice attacking move. Paredes even missing a penalty. Already qualified for the next stage, Venezuela also secured a group win and a date with Canada in the quarterfinals thanks to beating Jamaica. The goals came all in the second half through Bayo, Rondon of course, and then very late on Ramirez adds a third. It's an almost perfect group stage. Nine wins, only one goal conceded, six goals scored. Venezuela is as a highlight of the tournament so far. But it was all about second place in this group between Ecuador and Mexico. Mexico needed to get a win and it was a very physical game early on, yellow cards, fouls, it was rather rough watching. But in the end Mexico tried their best and Valencia Dofa, Ecuador also had a pretty good chance and was a linchpin for them. But Jimenez needs to put his headers on to goal. There were also two claims for a penalty for Mexico in there that just about were not penalties, but I could see them given as well. In the end Mexico are out in the quasi home tournament. It is hugely disappointing. However, after the loss to Panama, not surprising to say that the hosts, the United States of America, are already out of the Copa America at the group stage. Hugely dis disappointing. And yesterday, it was just not meant to be, it gotta be said. They tried their best against Uruguay, but it was never really there. It was uh, kind of a rough game to watch. And in addition, Fajardo, who had scored the win against the US, gave Panama a halftime lead. However, Bolivia came back, Bruno Miranda equalizes, and just when this news made its way to Kansas City, Oliveira scores a goal for Uruguay. So the US are still catching up, and against Uruguay it was really, really hard. In addition, Guerrero gave Panama the lead, and then very late on, just coming on, Yanis with two touches, his first two touches of the game, gets the 3-1 for Panama, and the US are out, Panama move on, and Uruguay very convincingly win that group. So ahead of match day three, Costa Rica knew that they had to get a big win over Paraguay and hope that Colombia will beat Brazil. And it started well for Costa Rica, getting two goals within the first six minutes. However, they couldn't keep it up. Paraguay pulled one back and then it even needs a big save by the Costa Rican goalie to save a win, which means a decent exit for Costa Rica from the Copa America. And so it all came down between Colombia and Brazil. Great match early on a yellow card for Vini who will miss the next round. Both teams having chances. Beautiful free kick by Rafinha gives Brazil the lead. Colombia has a goal call off for offside. And then the big controversy. Vinny is brought down in the box by Munoz. It's not a penalty. It even doesn't survive the VAR review. Scandalous. Absolutely scandalous because the ball was not played by Munoz. And to add insult to injury, Munoz gets the equalizer. Brazil tried to win the match with all that they could. And then late on they thought they had a corner kick. But the referee blew the whistle. And so Brazil have to face Uruguay now. And with that, the final bracket, including projections, and if you haven't seen my videos before, here I pulled out the bracket and I always let the stronger team move on. So if it was all chalk, it would look like follows. Argentina would of course beat Ecuador. One would expect it, although Ecuador is not a bad team, but you know, Argentina is just a better team. And Venezuela against Canada, that's an interesting one. I would say no one would have expected this matchup. Venezuela would move on. In that one. They're just a teeny bit better, although Canada will probably now be the CONCACAF favorite, if you would like. The big one, of course, is Uruguay against Brazil. Colombia against Panama. Yes, it's a neighboring duel. The Darien Derby, if you would like. Colombia have to move on. Uruguay and Brazil are very evenly matched. I just have Brazil slightly higher rated still, although they are not really justifying that with their performances. So Brazil against Colombia in a rematch of the group stage game. I think it would be an interesting one. Vinny Jr. will be back. And so for me, this is the, probably the biggest factor that I think Vinny Jr. being out might be against Brazil. But we would have them meeting. And yes, we would like to see an Argentina-Brazil final. But I think Argentina against Colombia would be a really interesting one too. I think also Argentina-Uruguay. Just for it being the original derby, if you would like, in South America, neighboring countries. Argentina is the big guy. Uruguay is a small nation with all the big stars. That would be a really interesting final, I gotta say. 
So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this match, although I won't be able to watch that because time difference. We have on Friday morning, that is Thursday evening local time, the first quarterfinal between Argentina and Ecuador. Then Friday local time, Saturday morning, European time, Venezuela against Canada. And then Saturday local time, Sunday morning, European time, the big one, Uruguay, Brazil. At midnight, I will still not be able to make it. I'm afraid, although this one is really, really, really enticing. That's a big one. And then Colombia against Panama. Let's see, the semifinals will then be played again, local time, Tuesday and Wednesday, like the Euros. It's just a little bit weird with all this time. And I use here the European times here. So don't be fooled there. In any case, let me know who you think is going to win it. I want to say Uruguay, although Argentina were not really challenged so far, but I want to say Uruguay. I would really love if Uruguay wins another one. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon, so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.